Travis, can you tell us a little bit about these two devices? Sure. Um, we've, we've had an exciting announcement here at CES this year. We've announced uh, the new FLIR 1, the next generation FLIR 1. If you recall, in 2014 at CES, we announced the original FLIR 1. Really what we've done with this device is tried to bring it to the rest of the market, multiple device platforms. Um, we uh, have two versions. One is FLIR 1 for iOS, mm -hmm. and the other is FLIR 1 for Android. So interoperability is really what we're striving for. Um, you can see on the device that it still has the two cameras. This is what we call MSX technology. Mm -hmm. It takes two images simultaneously, a visible image and a thermal image, combines them to create really a superior image with lots of detail, lots of uh, contours and context to give the user much more uh, just texture to, to mm -hmm. the image. So we're, we're looking at the, uh, the FLIR 1 here attached to the iPhone 6 with a lightning connector. This is the new FLIR 1 device. FLIR 1 for iOS works with any iOS device that has a lightning connector. You can see the, the app is uh, you know, very similar to the, to the original um, FLIR 1 app. A uh, couple, of, couple of modifications that will be uh, launched on the new app though. We've actually combined many of the features that we had in separate apps, panorama, time lapse, some of those features that were standalone apps previously have now uh, been combined into to one, single, one single app. Um, the palettes of colors, also the lookup for that is, is different from the, uh, the previous app. Um, you can see you can choose very simply uh, different images and you, you can see uh, the spot meter here. We'll go back to photo mode. Uh, giving giving you a different thermal contrast uh, uh, than what than what you had uh, in some of the other uh, images. So you can see that this is the temperature read there is actually uh, what I'm pointing at, right? So 77 degrees. The FLIR One also has its own battery, so it's not sucking power from the phone. Mm -hmm. uh, that's key. Obviously, no no user wants an accessory that. Uh, is going to draw power and, and make their make their phone go dead uh, faster. So it's self-sustaining from a from a battery standpoint. Okay. The final thing to mention on it really is, uh, for those that are familiar with the original FLIR One, uh, the new FLIR One has an automatic shutter capability. Uh, no long no longer does it have to be manually tuned like the original. Mm -hmm. um, so we're also excited about that. That allows you to have a constant temperature measurement out there. Uh, and not have to stop and tune when you change environments. Okay. So that, that's a little bit about the FLIR 1. The other device uh, that I'm going to talk about is what we call the C2. Mm -hmm. Now this device is really more intended for industrial markets, in particular the building market, the maintenance market. Um, the C2 is uh, a really innovative form factor. Uh, most of the cameras in that market, many of which are FLIR cameras, are, are handheld gun-shaped cameras that are point and shoot. Mm -hmm. This, on the other hand, you can see is a slim form factor, mm -hmm. still ruggedized, um, and uh, will allow people just to pull it out of their pockets, jacket pocket, pants pocket, purse, whatever the case may be. Um, and it just really provides that option from a form factor perspective, much lighter, much smaller dimensions. So this is, uh, this is the C2 in action here. Uh, a couple of things I would point out about this image. First of all, you see all the detail in the background, the video running there on the monitor, the image on the uh, graphics and the, the text as well. That's the MSX technology, which I referred to earlier, which is patented by FLIR that takes those two images, a visible and a thermal, and combines them to give you that kind of incredible detail. Um, the second thing uh, you might notice is this is a totally a touchscreen device. Um, so very, very easy to use, very simple menu as well. Um, and then it's point and shoot. It's got a very easy uh, camera button up here. Okay, so now we're, we're looking in the, the gallery, the image gallery of the C2, and you can see that Actually, two different images are being captured here. One, the visible image that looks like a normal uh, visible image, this VGA uh, camera. Uh, and then two, the MSX thermal image. So this is, again, the combined image using the vis visible outlines and the underlying thermal image. 
to give you uh, the best of both worlds. So you can see here um, the, the scale on the side is really giving us a temperature range of everything in this image, uh, the maximum and the minimum of uh, various objects in this image, uh, the temperature of those objects or what they're emitting. Uh, from a temperature perspective. The crosshair that you see in the middle is showing the reading in the upper left of the screen. So that is really sort of your, the spot uh, that you're directly measuring. So you can, you can see here there's two lenses. Again, this goes to the MSX technology that I've talked about. One is a visible camera and the other is a thermal camera. And those are both taking images simultaneously. And again, the, the device is processing those and combining those into one. This up here is actually a flash, which will uh, you can set to take for images in the dark. We know that that's very important from a building inspector's perspective. They're oftentimes in dark rooms. Uh, you can also use it as a spotlight. Uh, so that's also a key benefit to be able to really get that MSX definition. It's important to have the light uh, to get the good visible image. You can see here it uses a standard micro USB uh, connector to power as well as uh, to connect to a PC uh, and you know be able to uh, uh, download images, analyze the images using the free FLIR tools software. Um, so that's that's really the uh, C2 in a nutshell. So what are some of the application areas for these two devices? Well, you know, thermal imaging in general has been around for quite some time. Uh, for a number of years, it was really the domain of the military and first responder world. The past 10 or 15 years has become more pervasive in the commercial world. A uh, number of applications include electrical, mechanical, building inspect inspection applications, a lot of maintenance applications, where you really want to be able to see variances in temperature to be able to troubleshoot issues. Um, so it's very, very common technology at this point in many of those industrial sectors. Uh, what is new though is from a consumer standpoint, we were the first to really introduce thermal imaging technology in the consumer world. Some of the applications we've seen around that have been for do-it-yourself homeowners, also mm -hmm. troubleshooting issues at home, whether it be missing insulation, whether it be energy leakage through a doorway or a window. Um, those are very, very common applications. Another one is for the outdoor enthusiasts, hiking and camping. People love to be able to see in the dark, of course, and to see what's lurking around in the bush uh, mm -hmm. that they, you know, when they hear bump in the night. Um, so there, there are a number of emerging applications for thermal imaging. We expect it to continue to grow as we have more and more apps developed for the, the FLIR 1 platform. We do have an open SDK in the market as well right now. So we are working with third-party developers to really harness their innovation to bring new experiences uh, to the consumer market as well. Well, excellent. Well, you can find out more about FLIR's products by taking a look at the links to the side.